Okay, our last example of how to find the area need to curve involves an interesting equation, y equals x squared divided by the square root of x cubed plus 9, evaluated from x equals minus 1 to x equals 1. And again, I chose that one because we're probably going to use the method of substitution to find, and also to see how you can graph that, at least to some extent, so you know what you're, you're doing when trying to find the area. So let's graph the two functions separately, the numerator and the denominator separately. So if I graph the numerator, I will get the following. This is our y-axis. That's our x-axis, y equals x squared, looks like something like this. It's a parabola, opens upward, the vertex is at the origin. And then I'm going to graph just the denominator separately. So which is, let's say, y equals the square root of x cubed plus 9. And for the positive end of the spectrum, what do we get? Uh, let's see here. Um, so we probably, that's, if x is equal to 0, the square root of 9 is 3, so 1, 2, 3, and that probably looks like this on the positive side. Now, the question is, can we have this on the negative side as well? Well, we can to, some, to an extent. We can let x be negative all the way out to um, almost minus 2, so that means the equation can continue when x equals to minus 2 cubed, minus 2.1 cubed, so this continues down like this. And then we probably have to stop it because we cannot go negative on that. And so now we're trying to find the uh, function where we take the x squared and divide it by the denominator. But notice that for values from minus 1 to 1, because those are the limits <coughs> of my evaluation, both functions are either 0 or positive. And the one that becomes 0 is in the numerator, so I don't have to worry about that. That means when I divide the x squared by the square root of x cubed plus 9, I will get a positive value. In the case, of course, over here, I will get a 0, but I don't worry about that. And that means that whatever the function is, <clears throat> it looks like, if I were to guess what that function looks like, it probably looks something like this. Um, let's see here. Something like this. And then it comes up, and it probably looks something like that. So it looks like I can find the area need this curve. It'll probably look something like that. So it's a rough approximation of what that curve looks like when I divide the numerator by the denominator. I just want to make sure that it doesn't go negative anywhere and it looks like it does not. Okay, I'm now ready to go. So let's say that the area then is equal to the integral from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 1 of the value of x squared divided by uh, the square root of x cubed plus 9. Hey, it looks like that, oh, and don't forget my dx. Now it looks like the x squared is a derivative of the x cubed underneath the radical. That gives me an idea. I'm going to let u equal x cubed plus 9. Then my du dx is going to be equal to 3x squared. And the 9, of course, uh, that, that's a 0. And so du is equal to 3x squared dx, or dx is equal to du divided by 3x squared. All right, I'm now ready to substitute this and this into my integral. When I do that, I get the following. I have a, the area, is equal to the integral from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1. The, denom the numerator stays there, that's x squared. The denominator would be the square root of this quantity right here, which is equal to u. And instead of dx, I'm going to write du divided by 3x squared. Okay, the next thing I can do now is notice that this x squared will cancel out that x squared, so I no longer have any x's inside my integral. The 1 over 3 can be taken out, and so I can now write this as the area is equal to 1 over 3 times the integral from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1 of 1 over u to the 1 half du, which of course I can bring to the numerator and turn into a negative exponent. So this is equal to 1 over 3 times the integral from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1 of u to the minus 1 half du. And now I'm ready to integrate that. The integral of that is 1 third times... Uh, that would be u to the one-half power, because I add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, one-half, 
and then I have to evaluate that from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1. So that's why I keep plugging, putting in the variables for the limits to show you that the limit variables are not the same as the variable here. So I first have to con convert that back to the x variable. Okay, anyway, one third divided by one half, when you divide by a fraction, same as multiplying by its inverse. So this becomes two thirds. Instead of u to the one half, I'm going to write x cubed plus 9 to the one half power. So this becomes x cubed plus 9 to the one half power and evaluate it from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1. And now I'm ready to go ahead and plug in the values. Okay, this is equal to 2 thirds times, when I plug in the upper limit, I get 1 cubed plus 9, 1 cubed plus 9 raised to the one-half power. Then I subtract from that when I plug in the lower limit. That would be minus 1 cubed plus 9 to the one-half power. And I guess that's it. The two-thirds, I factored it out so I can leave it like this. Which means this is equal to two-thirds times 1 plus 9 is 10, so that would be the square root of 10. That would be 10 to the 1 half power minus, when I, this is um, minus 1 plus 9, that would be 8 to the 1 half power. And I guess we could simplify that any further, but that's good enough. So 2 thirds times the square root of 10 minus the square root of 8. And I, I'll go ahead and leave it like that, even though I can simplify it just slightly more. But that's good. At least the technique is there. So again, notice that we had a, an integral that we had to use the method of substitution. When you substitute it, you can see that the, when you integrated, the limits were in x. The, the variable that we integrated was a u. We had to substitute back into the x variable before we can apply the limits and get the final answer. And that's how you do that.